Omar Jackson Studio. Uh, <laughs> live from the Midtown Jackson Studio and live from well in to Deep 13, this is Last Call Cafe on Spreaker with the animalistic Jay the Brain Man, the animalistic Matthew the Wizard Nichols, and the pause for consideration. Steve, the Baxman Baxley. I'm Franklin Pangborn, your announcer, with Morgul as the friendly drone. Let's go to the cafe and find out what's going on and join the guys on a whole crowd. It's Lost Call Cafe on Spreaker! And we're on. Go! Everybody, welcome, welcome, one and all to the Corsican Ball. This is Lost Call Cafe on Spreaker, and you have been warned. You've had a week. Now it's time to let your brains get feng shui baby. I am your host, one of them. We're in the cafe today, protected and feeling good. I am your host, Steve the Baxman Baxley, and alongside me, as par usual, my equal host, the uh, the one-two punch, as I like to call them. That's right. They are the right and left lung of the massive building that is the Last Call Cafe. He is, of course, the gamer's best friend. Ladies and gentlemen, I bring to you, bring forth the man, the mighty, mighty Mr. Matthew the Wizard Nichols. And of course, without this other guy, this program made this three-part harmony of joke, fun, and games would not exist. Ladies and gentlemen, I bring you the... uh, Undefeated champion of the intergender wrestling organization, the manager of champions and Betty White's favorite chew toy at about this hour, ladies and gentlemen, the host of WrestleMania Hut, the one, the only. Whoa, 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 whoa. What was that called again? Jay the Brain Man presents. No, 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 no. no. Say, Say it slowly. The host of Jay. The Brain Man presents a Wrestle Anime Hut. Thank you, because last time you said WrestleMania Hut, and that's a completely different show. Jada Brain Metal World's Smartest Children's Video Game Editor Year 2011. And by the way, we are now on Castbox, which I have no oh, idea what that is, but we are on another streaming service, so that's cool. Maybe one day, you, maybe one day we'll make it to iHeartRadio. I've submitted it. If we. So. And if we make it to iHeartRadio, that's going to come into some very, very, very big bing, bing, baby. Oh, there it is. In fact, let's hit that effect, boss. Little bing, bing. Or a little blong, blong, if you prefer. All right, folks, tonight, 
Uh, we're going to do what we can to entertain you and to keep you in the mood of joy and peace. We got your wrestling report, your entertainment report. But, of course, we always start our report. Mr. Pangborn, our announcer extraordinaire, take to the microphone, dear sir, and do the intro that I know you love to do so well. This is Gamer News with Matthew the Wizard Nichols. And now with the latest in gaming news, here's the Wizard. Thanks. Okay, this week on Gamer News, we finally have an official date for the PlayStation 5 event. June 4th at at 1 p.m. PTT time or 4 p.m. Eastern time. Yep, we're finally going to see some PlayStation 5 games and hopefully the console itself. <clears throat> yep. Robbie. Let's see. Yep. Thursday, we're finally getting PlayStation 5 news. PS5 games, hopefully the console. And I am excited as hell about it. Because holy crap, it's been a long anticipated wait. So, hopefully, we'll get some more PS5 news, maybe the release date, maybe the pre-order date, so we can finally start putting pre-orders on the console. So, everyone, mark your calendars for June 4th for PlayStation 5 reveal event. June the 4th be with you. Yep. Yes, indeed. Yep, and that's pretty much it for Gamer News. This has been Gamer News with Matthew the Wizard Nichols. I'm Franklin Pangborn. All right, gracias, old wizard of Whippy. How you all doing, old wizard? And by the way, uh... The L2C Sports Final is the place to be for eSports action. We will bring you the final scores of Counter-Strike Deemhack, of FIFA 1, FIFA Cool Liga, Counter-Strike from uh, North America, from Europa, from uh, a few other places too, Dota 2, ESL, the China Professional League, and a few other leagues as well, and the League of Legends and Overwatch. So uh, tune in to uh, some uh, e-game scores and more. And, uh, hey, even Matt will give us some e-sports as well. It is, of course, his forte, as they say in the biz. All right. Uh, that is if I ever go around to catching one of them. <laughs> now, I'll give you a link to where you can find them. Yes, sir. Okay, kids, it is time to give you a little entertainment news and then a little wrestling news. Or wrestling news, if you prefer. And, uh, yes, ladies and gentlemen, it's uh, the long, hot summer because of uh, coronavirus and everything else that has occurred has... uh, well, has really hit the broadcasting industry. In fact, CBS is major league hurting. And uh, we'll give you the uh, words here for just a moment, plus a few other things as well. Let's uh, first 
get you um ah here we go uh here we go okay let's get you with the exclusive from deadline dot com darling uh kind of looks like the merger with viacom or shall we say the re-merger with viacom has really uh Hey, made everything uh, a little bit uh, uncertain. Two days after latest round of Viacom CBS post merger layoffs, which were focused primarily on the entities within the CBS Entertainment Group, more details about the scope of the cuts are emerging. One of the most impacted divisions was CBS Marketing, which saw 30 to 40 layoffs. That was almost 10% of all pink slips handed out on Wednesday, believed to be around 400. The list of departures includes the three most senior CBS veterans in the department. Garen Van de Beek, Executive Vice President and Creative Director, CBS Marketing. Lori Schaefer, Senior Vice President and Creative Director, CBS Marketing. And Leslie, with no E, except after L. Leslie Lawrence, Senior Vice President and Creative Director, Print Advertising. Uh, this week's layoffs are part of a reorganization of CBS's marketing operations under Mike Benson, who was named President and Chief Marketing Officer in September. The CBS spokesman would not comment beyond the statement the company released about the layoffs on Wednesday, except to say we are restructuring various operations at CBS as part of our ongoing integration with Viacom and to adopt to changes in our business, including those related to COVID-19. Our thoughts today are with our departing colleagues for their friendship, service, and many important contributions to CBS. Wow. In fact, uh, we can tell you that... uh, uh, some of the uh, layoffs occurred at the owned and operated television stations, some of which do produce uh, some newscasts for the uh, CW stations that are co-owned by, of course, CBS. A uh, couple of them, mainly uh, uh, CBS's Chicago station and CBS's uh, Los Angeles duopoly have uh, been hit and hit hard by all this uh, little mess. <clears throat> also, good news if you're a Lucifer fan, uh, Tom Ellis has closed the deal to return for a sixth season of the Netflix uh, broadcast. As you know, Netflix took over production when Fox did a stupid thing and canceled Lucifer after two seasons. Uh, let's see here. Cobra Kai is closing in on a new streaming home with YouTube poised to release the hit release the hit series ahead of season three. Let's give you that word. Then we'll give you some uh, movie words like cut, print, hold, heal. YouTube's flagship scripted series, Cobra Kai, will be moving to a new streaming platform for its third season. The Google-owned online video service is in the process of releasing season three of the original, of the uh, popular show to producing studio Sony Pictures Television amid a retreat from premium original scripted programming. Sony TV had taken Cobra Kai out. With all the major streamers expressing interest, sources said, the field of suitors had been narrowed down with Netflix and Hulu leading the short list of contenders for the Karate Kid sequel series starring Ralph Macchio and William Zabka. No one would comment, but along with exclusive rights to season three of Cobra Kai, the new outlet will have access on a non-exclusive basis to the first two seasons of the show. For fans to catch up, that has been part of negotiation with YouTube, which had ownership and exclusive global rights to the first two seasons under the original license agreement with Sony TV. Questions about the long-term future of Cobra Kai on YouTube arose when the company in late 2018 signaled a strategic shift from uh, SVOD to a AVOD model and away from original scripted programming to double down on unscripted fare. 
Indeed, every YouTube scripted original to air since then has been canceled, except for Cobra Kai and Lisa on Demand, starring popular YouTube personality Lisa Koshi, which has been renewed for additional seasons. Now, on the heels of a record-setting season two premiere of Cobra Kai, YouTube in April 2019 ordered a third season. YouTube remained committed to airing the completed third season, but notified its Sony TV partners that they won't be commissioning a fourth. So Sony asked for permission to shop the upcoming season to an outlet that, in success, would order additional seasons. Negotiations between the two sides ensued. They are nearing a successful conclusion, but YouTube will not formally release the series under a new home until a new home has been secured. And why do I get this feeling it's going to be at Netflix? That would be fun to have it on Netflix. It would. Put it on the WWE Network. There you go. (laughs) Oh, speaking of which, uh, nice job on HBO Max. That's right. Great great promotional. And And, uh, uh, um, they've been... I criticized them on day one for not having every Space Ghost episode up there. And for their weird editing of uh, somebody, uh, a Turner, a Time Warner company uh, bylines in, at the end of episodes, but they have been adding uh, some of the episodes that are missing. Like, for instance, for some reason, Fire Ant wasn't on there, even though they have Table Read. But now they have the short version of Fire Ant up there, so I can't complain about that. They also, on day one, didn't have the episode of Aqua Teen Hunter Force Boost Mobile, which, you know, is a big old infomercial for Boost Mobile. Well, in theory. But now it's up there, so. Which one? Aha. Yes. Uh, and, and. Uh... And I'll tell you, I think uh, HBO Max, uh, I think, if I'm not mistaken, I was watching a few of their commercials. Uh, HBO Max has uh, some uh, Doctor Who on their it uh, has list. The, it has the entire uh, reboot, uh, rerooted version of it from Ooh. season one all the way up to the current one. Well, ah, well, fantastic. I'm, I'm not sure if it's the current one, but it's the one with Jodie Whittaker. Yep, that would be the current uh, a little break in entertainment news. Midnight Rider director Randall Miller is facing a new arrest warrant over probation violations. Oy. We are the nation of probation violations. Yes. <laughs> that was we stupid. are. <laughs> that was stupid. If brothers and sisters, we are a nation of probation. Yes, indeed. Let's uh, take you now to some film report, and then we'll uh, kick it over to the wrestling. And uh, give you some uh, little ratings news for you. Uh, first of all, the Telluride Film Festival announces it will go on with the show. Plans continue to hold important Oscar precursor event on schedule. Nice. Motion Picture Academy Board of Governors nominees list include Brett Ratner, Ava DuVernay, and Michael Schamberg. Uh, the Board of Governors selection... Uh, should be an interesting, uh, placement. Ryan Gosling tackling Universal's Wolfman remake. That's right, Ryan Gosling sinking his teeth into Universal's growing Monster Universe titles. The two-time Oscar nominee is attached to star in a Wolfman remake, which was written by Orange is the New Black Scribes, Lauren Shuker Bloom and Rebecca Angelo. Not bad. Not bad at all. Um, the Eddie, oh, this this is a biggie exclusive. WME has signed, not WWE, but WME, William Morris, has signed actor Andre Holland. Holland is the best known for his performance in the Oscar-winning best picture, Moonlight, as well as High Flying Bird, Wrinkle in Time, and Selma, uh, the latter for which he was nominated for the NA, NAACP Award for Outstanding Supporting Actor in Motion Picture. Hot doggies. Okay. Uh, RuPaul Drag Races. Uh, well, we'll take that one in a future, mutured, future, mutured. 
Uh, who won season 12 of RuPaul's Drag Race? Drag Race? Drag Race. For those of you that haven't seen it, we, of course, must alert. <laughs> Spoiler alert. Coming, friends. Spoiler alert. So if you don't want to know who won, if you don't want to know who won it, um, here we go, the winner of season 12 of RuPaul's Drag Race is... Jada Essence Hall. Jada Essence Hall. Congratulations. Ah, uh, yes. Okay. Okay, let's get you in some little wrestling news while we have a moment here before we uh, hit the general with uh, what I do believe is a uh, ultra belt request. Ooh, this is going to be an interesting one. Um, itchy, 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 itchy. Okay, here we go. First off, two uh, to- some top impact uh, wrestlers Missed a couple of TV tapings. Impact World Champion Tessa Blanchard did not work this week's Impact TV tapings in Nashville at Skyline Studios, according to PW Insider. Blanchard also missed the last set of empty arena tapings due to being in Mexico and not traveling back to the United States, reportedly because of COVID-19. She has appeared for a video uniform interview a few weeks back. Now, there is no word yet on when Tessa will be back in action. It's believed that the company taped several weeks' worth of Impact content this week. A tournament to determine the new number one contender to Blanchard and her title will wrap on next Tuesday's Impact episode as Trey Miguel takes on Ace Austin. Bum, 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 bum. All right. Uh, Ric Flair and WWE uh, have settled the man trademark dispute. As you know, the man, obviously, Becky Lynch, but we all know who the real man is, Ric Flair. WWE Hall of Famer Ric Flair recently reached a deal to transfer the rights to his two trademarks on the man to WWE. The United States Patent and Trademark Office shows that Flair's LLC assigned the entire interest and the goodwill of the two trademarks to WWE on Tuesday, May 19th. These are the same trademarks for the man that Flair, that Flair filed for on August 22nd and August 26th of last year. Flair followed those trademarks after WWE had billed Becky Lynch as the man because he felt like those intellectual properties belonged to him since he has used that name for years. At the time, he publicly stated in interviews that WWE should have paid him for the use of the nickname for Lynch. Flair noted in his original trademark filing that he first used the man in commerce back in 1976. As we noted, the Nature Boy recently inked the new WWE contract, so it's possible the trademarks were part of that new deal. All right. Uh, five matches are announced for next week's AEW Dark episode on YouTube. What are those matches? Billy Gunn with Billy with Billy Gunn with Austin Gunn taking on John Skyler. Sean Spears versus Clutch Adams. Brandon Cutler and Peter Avalon with Leva Bates versus QT Marshall and Dustin Rhodes with Brandy Rhodes. The Butcher, the Butcher, the Blade and the Bunny return versus John Cruz and Joe Alonzo and Santana and Ortiz take on big game Leroy and EJ Lewis. AEW Dark 
airs every Tuesday night at 7 on the AEW YouTube channel. That is until TBS gets it for their Saturday night show. You never know. And, uh... Looks like Samoa Joe's career is uh, sort of on the ice block, as he has been report is he is reportedly being considered to be a permanent member of the Raw announced team. Joe has not returned to the ring because he's still waiting to be medically cleared to compete from the concussion he suffered during the Raw commercial shoot back in February. He was brought back to Raw commentary in late April, filling in for Jerry Lawler. And now the Wrestling Observer newsletter reports. That Joe is considered to be Lawler's permanent replacement on the Red Brand announced team. There is no word yet on what this means for when Joe is medically cleared for in-ring action, but the Observer noted that Joe may have a role when he where he announces, and then they shoot angles for him to wrestle using the other role. Things could change down the road if WWE runs into depth issues with the Raw roster, or if they feel they need Joe as a full-time wrestler, but they can also have Joe work both roles. It was originally believed that Joe was filling in for Lawler due to concerns over Lawler being at a higher risk to work TV tapings during the coronavirus pandemic. It remains to be seen if WWE will bring Lawler back to the announce table once regular tapings resume. And we bring you greetings of uh, uh, the blessing as Bray Wyatt and former ring announcer JoJo announced on Twitter the birth of their second child. The former WWE Universal Champion revealed the baby girl's name is Hyrie Von Rotunda. JoJo also shared a photo on Instagram of her holding Hyrie. She captioned the photo, Hyrie, Hyrie Von Rotunda, I love you. Last year in May, the couple welcomed their son, son Nash Six Rotunda. Wrestling Inc., as well as we, like to send our congrats to Bray and JoJo. Looks like his father. Looks like uh, Hyrie's father. There you go. Has his father's nose. But... Oh, it's a cute little, it's a cute little bundle of love. Okay, I think we got uh, one more and then we'll uh, see if anyone else wants to have a few words before we bring out Mon General. Uh, by the way, uh, WWE has released one of the head SmackDown writers. Oh boy. Chris DeJoseph has been released from the WWE Lack of Creative Department. Uh, DeJoseph just returned to work for WWE back in December. He previously worked WWE Creative from 2004 to 2010 and was used on TV as t- at times as the Big Dick Johnson comedy character. He also worked for MLW and Lucha Underground. That was fun. Okay, and uh, let's see here. Uh, whoops, back up there, boy. Uh, next week on AEW, we want to let you know that uh, Tony Schiavone will interview FTR, uh, Cash Wheeler and Dak Hardwood. Uh, have been confirmed for next Wednesday's AEW Dynamite episode on TNT. It'll be a uh, sit-down interview with Tony Schiavone next Wednesday uh, during Dynamite. And, uh, and that's uh, one of many things that are going to be uh, available uh, June 3rd. I don't know if that's going to be live or on tape. Stand by for detail. And uh, once again, there is no uh, Ring of Honor uh, uh, spoilage to uh, give you since uh, ROH has uh, shut down for a while due to the coronavirus. But um, if you love that uh, stadium stampede, I have a feeling everybody else did. I have a feeling that could be a, a yearly event. 
taking place in uh, Double or Nothing. Uh, and uh, MLW, we haven't heard from them re- uh, in uh, recent weeks, but MLW is debuting a new weekly Pulp Fusion series. The new weekly series will take fans inside the world of MLW and its athletes to experience the continuation of rivalries. It will also introduce new and familiar faces and give an idea of what's next for the promotion. Of course, this is coming on the heels of the NWA, bringing us Carnyland, among other uh, little Bon Mots on their YouTube channel, including the Eli Drake Show and... Girl Power, uh, among other uh, little, little parts of the uh, uh, nightly show, I'm going to say, because it's on Monday through Friday, uh, Carnyland is what it's called, a uh, part of uh, that little uh, uh, good news thing. So uh, there you go. Let's take a look at uh, how the ratings went for... Oops, for uh, this week while we have some time. And then the general will uh, show up. All Elite Wrestling prevailed again over WWE NXT in the ratings battle Wednesday night, four days after the Double or Nothing pay-per-view, according to Showbuzz Daily. Dynamite averaged 827,000 viewers during its two-hour broadcast, while NXT... Brought in 731,000 viewers on the USA Network. Hee-haw! There you go. So, congratulations, folks. It looks like AEW is uh, giving McMahon more worries. And speaking of more worries, um, you're probably asking, hey, is there any news? For the uh, uh, for the XFL, yes, there is news. Uh, while Vince McMahon may not be interested in buying the XFL, uh, well, there are dozens of bidders in active decision discussions to buy the XFL. One of them exclusively is or am or are the uh, ultra power Disney folks you know Disney they just recently bought Fox the uh, 20th 20th century Fox film and television thing about boobers well it looks like uh, Fox and Disney are interested in buying the XFL Give you a little uh, report. This has been a whirlwind couple of months for the XFL and its fans. From shutting down of the season, the layoff of employees, declaring Chapter 11 to the fallout between Oliver Luck and Vince McMahon, the news has been doom and gloom for the once promising spring football league. Late last week, there was speculation that Vinny Mac was going to try and buy back the lead. That notion was ended as McMahon declared in court files that he was not interested in buying back the uh, XFL. In the court filing, we learned that there are over 20 interested parties inquiring details of the XFL. They have signed non-disclosure agreements. We also learned the timeline for for when all these legal proceedings will go down. This week, CBS Sports writer Jason LaCanfora published a lengthy article about how it would be in the interest of the NFL to purchase the Spring League. Um. His uh, article was titled, NFL Needs a Developmental League and Rebooting the XFL is a Perfect Fit to Improve League Diversity in Depth. This week, Matt Perry sat down with noted F- XFL insider Mike Mitchell to talk about everything that has transpired behind the scenes, and this is what he said. Quote, I know that media companies have made inquiries on the possibility of purchasing the XFL. I do know that both Fox and Disney have inquired. What I do not know is whether or not they are part of the 20 potential bidders in companies now that are in on the potential auction process. But I do know that Fox and Disney have shown interest in purchasing the XFL. Now, the ramifications of this would not only bring excitement back to the players, coaches, staff, and fans, but the idea that a hugely successful media company owning the 
sports league could send shockwaves throughout the supporting world. With rising television rights fees and exploding player salaries, how would the sports world change if a major media corporation owned its own sports league? Would Fox Disney bring back XFL CEO and Commissioner Oliver Luck now that McMahon is totally out of the picture? We'll have an answer on August 7th when the sale hearing takes place in a courtroom in Delaware. So, as they say, stay tuned. This thing just got interesting and wild. Comments, guys. I ain't got nothing. Mm-hmm. Me neither. Okay, I think it's time, Mon General. You uh, got a little business here. Thank you, boys, and I do understand that I'm I must um sort of uh oversensor myself in my words. But I will say that um our good friend there, gentlemen by the way, hope everything is well. Matthew, how you doing? I'm doing good. Brain, as always, a pleasure. How are you? Good. All right. Now, uh, this was suggested, and we're going to give it to him. Um, the uh, the police officers in Minneapolis, who so sort of roughly, sort of uh, rough. Well, they uh, they were rough. On uh, George, I mean standing. I mean putting your knee on a dude's neck for nine uh, for yes. nine minutes is per, is a little bit more than rough. Yes, I do agree with you, Brain. I do agree with you, and I say this deserves more than just your standard belch. I know we do this uh, supposed to once or twice a year, but for this, it deserves it. So, to the police in Minneapolis, we're we're standing back. We're getting ready. Hit the ultra belt. Uh, Whoa. Any uh, any damage to the oh lost a few uh, tiles here, but the ultra belch is for you. There you go, gentlemen. Let's hope next week will be a comma safer belch of the week. We can only hope. This miss. All right, thank you very much. I'm sorry, Franklin. We were hoping we sort of have a uh, little uh, little time limitables here. Uh, next week, we will have our first uh, listing of uh, comedy and a little music. Um, that... That'll be the uh, case. So, folks, join us next week. Don't forget, Saturday night, Saturday night, you two NAMA fans, hit us up. for, And and we will try to make sure that it doesn't make my laptop freeze like last time. Yeah. We got you covered with uh, Toonami news, views, and everything else in the Russell Anime Hut. Thank you very much, both of you. So, until we meet again, ladies and gentlemen, for the erstwhile Jay the Brain Man, the awesome fury of the wizard, Matthew Nichols, I am Steve the Baxman Baxley, reminding you to always look on the bright side of life because you never want to look at the dark side of Newsweek. And I'm Jay the Brain Man, and I'm here to remind you that trans teens backwards is sneet snart. <laughs> Matthew, would you like to say your ending? Well, made the 
June. Be with you on Thursday the 4th for PlayStation 5. And with that, we say that this has been the Last Call Cafe with the brain, the Baxman, the wizard. And it has been a presentation of Mystifying Creativity Productions in association with the L2C Media Network and Spreaker. Back tomorrow night for the Wrestle Anime Hut. And then back here next week for more fun, more excitement, more pageantry. Last Call Cafe. Good night, everybody!